What's going on guys? Welcome back to Your Lake Fort Guide. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to locate your own secret spot. We're talking about summer bass fishing. We're talking about giant bass. It works on Lake Fort. It also works on other lakes. But today we're going to teach you guys how to find the big giant summer bass that 99% of anglers will never ever find. With today's electronic setups, it is harder and harder for bass to hide. How many times have you heard professionals say that? People that are detractors from LiveScope have said that. There's a lot of talk going on around the bass fishing industry about how there's no more bass that are hidden because of today's electronics. I believe there might be some. I believe there might be some because what's going on is as more and more people get these electronics and pretty much most people that fish these days have some form of side imaging, down imaging, sonar. A lot of people have the 360s and, and the forward facing sonars, but pretty much everybody has at least side imaging and down imaging and sonar. And, and there's a lot of truth to that, for, especially for summertime bass fishing that, man, most of the fish in the lake just can't hide. There's so much, and especially with new mapping technologies that show us uh, more detail about the structure underneath the water, it makes it easier to identify key spots. The whole point of this is, there's not many secrets left out there. There's not many bass that aren't receiving pressure. There's not many places for these bass to hide. But there is one summer pattern, one summer pattern, that it is phenomenal, it's big fish, it's very steady and consistent for the most part, and it does not even get looked at by 99% of the anglers out there. What am I talking about? I'm talking about the elusive shallow water residential bass. These are bass that live in certain places in shallow water throughout the summer. They do not leave. They are there in, they're there now in June. They're gonna be there in July. They'll be there in August. I've seen this thing unfold on Lake Ford many, many times in the past. Now, if you have a lake that is devoid of vegetation, has no vegetation, it has no shoreline cover, then this pattern will not apply to that lake. Last year, Lake Fork being low, this pattern did not apply to Lake Fork. All the fish was offshore, and you saw in our videos, we did all offshore structure fishing. This year, we're back to more of the normal. In fact, we've kind of got an extreme case of shallow cover this year because so much grew up on the shoreline while the lake was down. Now the lake's filled up more and, and flooded all that cover, you know, bushes, grasses, and on top of that, we've got grass coming back in Lake Fork. Hydrilla and Coontail is growing pretty well in certain areas on Lake Fork. So, uh, and as well as the emergent vegetation, the palm weeds, the gator grass, all that potato, all that green stuff that you see that grows along the shallow water areas, uh, it's all coming back on Lake Fork. So we've got an overabundance of cover up shallow. Now, most of our lakes in this region are gonna have some form of shallow water cover, or shoreline cover, be it reed heads, cattails, flooded vegetation like we've been talking about, or even the underwater aquatic vegetation is in coontail. Hydrilla and Millful. Most of our lakes are gonna have one, if not all of those in this region down here in the south. When you have that, you are going to have fish and not, it's not little fish. I think that's a big misconception. You go fish shallow in the summertime, yeah, you can catch a few, but they're gonna be little. Guys, I'm talking about big giant fish. Some of the biggest fish that I ever caught in Lake Fork were caught in hot weather in shallow water. Uh, the second 10 pounder I think that I ever caught was caught in the very back of a creek in very shallow water in the middle of the heat of summer. So uh, this is a very viable pattern. In fact, it's the only pattern I've even been running lately. If you guys have followed along on the Facebook page, you see the pictures we've been posting and we're not even posting half of them. Like there's so many big fish that we've been catching in this shallow water. So let's break down how to locate shallow water summer giant bass. I got my diagram here. My big fancy board, as you guys can see. We're going high tech right here. So let's start down here in the bottom left hand corner. So this is gonna be things that you can locate in the middle section. So this is gonna be a creek arm here. This is a diagram of creek arm. Okay, this is the main lake out here and here's a creek arm. So we're off the main lake no matter what, right? But if in the middle section of the creek right in here, you'll find things like this. 
Now what this is, that's the shoreline that where it's black. That's a point that's five foot, that's 10 foot. Here's a creek channel. If you can find points that stick out, shallow points that stick out, and they're gonna have bushes and flooded cover on them, preferably, like grasses of some kind, some type of vegetation. Now right now on Lake Fork, they've got all kinds of cover, but if you're on different lake, you're on Bob Sandler. Whatever lake you're on, if it has some shoreline vegetation, some, some pond weed or some hydrilla coontail, or just some flooded brush or something like that, then it can apply, this pattern can apply to this. Where you have a point sticking out and a creek channel makes a turn and goes very close to said point, you can catch fish off and on throughout the day on this. It's always worth making a pass on there and hitting that point and fishing, fishing in a little bit. Uh, that is one of the number one places that you can locate these shallow water fish. They will, that what they have here is they have access to deeper, like mid depth water, say 10 to 15 feet, eight to 12 feet, something like that in the creek channel. And they've got a shallow water shelf to go feed on. So these fish will not be here all the time. You will pull up on, them, especially in the middle of the day, there'll be times when you pull up on that and you don't get bit. But if you pull up when they're up there to feed, you can catch them fast and in a hurry and it works throughout summer. It doesn't ever stop. Like they, they keep using that. They use this as their house. They use that as their kitchen. And that is their living quarters, you might say. So that works. That's an easy one to go find. You can find that on Navionics maps, on the Navionic web app. You can study and find it. Super easy to find things like this scenario right here. The one that's a little bit more difficult to find and the one that's a little bit more unique is the very back, let's say, quarter or fifth of a creek. I'm talking about if the creek is this long, we're talking about this little section up at the top is all we're focused on right there that section where the arrow is pointing. Now, within that section, now this is a big creek arm. We're talking about major creek arms. We don't need little creek arms. If we're talking about Lake Fork, we're talking about uh, a little Mustang, a big Mustang, not a Williams. Williams isn't as viable on this pattern. It's a little bit smaller creek arm. Not a no-name creek. That is not viable on this pattern at all. We're talking about Dale, Rogers, Bell, all of these type of creeks. Now, what you want in the back of that creek is you want an expanse of shallow water. So a good example of that would be Dale. Dale Creek has a huge amount of shallow water in the back of it. The other factor that you need to have that I didn't draw on here is you need to have a creek channel that is not silted in. I forgot to add that on here. I should have added that on here. You gotta have a creek channel that's not silted in. You gotta have something to give them that sudden depth change. It does not have to be a huge depth change. It doesn't have to be a super deep creek channel. Right now, the ones on fork that I'm using are anywhere from five or six down to about eight or nine foot deep in the bottom of the creek channel, and anywhere from two to five feet on the flat that leads out to the creek channel. But you want these areas to not be steep sloping. So like earlier, I mentioned Bell Branch. Bell Branch has a lot of steep banks and steep drop-offs. Bell Branch is actually not a creek that I would go try to find this pattern in because the banks are too steep, it drops off too quickly. You want, basically what it is, is you're trying to find fish, okay, that don't realize 20 foot of water exists. Those, if there's a fish in the back of Dale Creek, he is half a mile from 20 foot of water, okay? If you're talking about a fish up around the Highway 19 Bridge in Lake Fork Creek, that fish is a couple miles from 20 foot of water. He doesn't even know that deep water exists. And that is what you're looking for. The fish that are living in the back of this creek, they would have to make some kind of major migration to find that deeper water access. Those are the fish that are gonna be your true residential 24 hours a day, seven days a week fish in the summer that are gonna live in this shallow water. Now within that shallow water, what you've gotta find in those big expanses of flat, flat ground is going to be the creek channel. This is a just a creek channel right here. So that is what you'll find in the back and you can find that again. The Avionics web app is a great tool. If you get some low water images on like Google Maps or something like that, then you can actually see the creek channel is really, really detailed. If you see low water conditions on Google Earth or Google Maps or anything like that, it'll stand out like a sore thumb. Once you've found those creek channels, those fish, as it gets hotter and hotter, all the fish that are living in that shallow water, that big expanse of shallow water, it's a huge area. All those fish are gonna to suck to the creek channel. They're gonna to get to the relatively deepest water that they can. Now they're not always gonna be in the channel, but they will be near it most days. The whole key to really breaking down these areas and finding these fish is finding the channel and on your sunny and hot days, sunny and hot, you're gonna stay tight to the creek. So I actually like to position my boat in the creek 
fish down the creek and along the edges and within one cast of the creek. I like to keep my boat in the creek channel on the sunny and hot days. If the water cool trends a little bit, the water temps may be 90 degrees, but if they were 93 yesterday and they cooled down to 90 and it's cloudy outside, if there's a cool trend in the water, the fish will get out of that creek channel and wander that flat and all the cover around them more frequently and wander further from the creek channel. So on your cloudy days with a cool trend going on or just any kind of cool trend going on, now you're gonna to have to explore. It actually makes it more difficult to catch them when you have cloudy weather and cool trending water. I know that seems counterintuitive, but the hotter it is, the sunnier it is, the more it puts them near that channel and it just locates them for you where you don't have to go find them. So it's pretty simple philosophy to find these residential shallow water fish. Mid Creek, look for shallow points that extend out or shallow humps, shallow humps can work too, that have a depth change swinging in close by, mainly at creek channels, which you're gonna have 90% of the time. Uh, if you're getting to the back back of the creek, which is where the true residential fish are, and that's where the juice kind of is, is in the very backs of these creeks, okay? You're gonna stay near the creek channel. Now, if it's cloudy and cool training, you can get out around. One of the issues on Lake Fork right now when you get to the backs of these creek channels is when you get to about three foot of water and less, in most of them, there's so much flooded cover, you can't, it's difficult to navigate your boat through. So many bushes and things that grew up when the lake was low. So it actually adds another challenging element and it really limits what you can fish in those areas. Uh, basically, you're stuck in those areas to a frog or a weedless swim bait if you wanna fish the expanse of the bushes. You'll see on those areas, if you get in there on a cool training day or a cloudy day, you'll see those fish blowing up way off in the junk, like way off in these bushes. When you're seeing that, you're going to want to throw your bait as far in there as you can, and you're limited to a frog and a small weedless swim bait, or maybe a swim jig. That's pretty much what you can fish in those things and cover that water efficiently. When they're near the channel and near where the water opens up a little bit more, now you open up some options on what you can fish. We're throwing different topwaters, mostly frog, but we have been throwing different topwaters. Um, you can throw swim baits, swim jigs, chatter baits can work. See, chatter baits won't go in all the thick bushes, but they can go in the ones that are more spread out and down the edges of the creek channels. Chatter baits have been really effective for us. You can also flip and pitch a Texas rig when they're closer to the edge of the channel. And every bush that's growing near the channel and every stump that has always been along the creek channel, you can throw Texas rigs and things like that in there. Uh, so it opens up your options more on how to catch them. But I cannot express to you how effective this pattern can be. It, this is a way where you guys can take this, go find these areas on your own, and you can literally have your own little secret, it's like a secret spot, dude. You're back there, you're all by yourself, nobody's messing with you, and you've got free reign to wail on them, and there's a bunch of fish, and I mean a bunch of fish in these areas, especially right now on Lake Fork. Uh, it's so effective, so effective. I hope all you guys have wanted to make this video for Skeeter Owners Tournament because I know how crowded it gets on Skeeter Owners Tournament. And every piece of offshore structure is going to have multiple boats on it this weekend at the Skeeter Owners Tournament. If you'll adopt this pattern, you'll be able to have some water to yourself. As crowded as it is, there's probably going to be some boats doing this. Man, it won't be very many, especially compared to that main lake. And you can get back in these areas and really catch them. If you want the cheat code to find in some of these areas, be sure you go download the Fish Life app. The life is spelled with a Y, L-Y-F-E. It's linked in the description. And you can subscribe to the Lake Fork Premium Package. We've already got some of these areas on there. I'm, a go I'm going to be updating those areas uh, the next couple days before this weekend to make sure we're updating them again. We just updated them a couple weeks ago. We're updating them again to make sure that we have all the latest and greatest information on the Lake Fork Premium Package for you guys fishing the Skeeter Owners Tournament this weekend. What else? Bow lane ships. If you guys need bow lane ships, we sell the Year Lake Fork Out Pro Lanes. These are lanes that I made all over Lake Fork while she was low last year in the wintertime. And uh, man, it's the most in-depth bow lane ship you can buy. It's got more hazard waypoints. It's got multiple running depths. You got lanes that are good down to three foot low, lanes that are good down to six foot low. Uh, but right now you can run them all because the lake's pretty much full, pretty close to it. So Year Lake Fork Out Pro Lanes, it's the most in-depth. Uh, covers the most ground, has the most lanes. I like this stuff out of all the boat lane options that are out there. Uh, we're proud of it. I worked really hard on it. Spent a lot of time making it. Uh, but you guys go get you one of those. And like we always like to say, you know, go get your Lake Fork Guy Pro Lanes and navigate Lake Fork just like a pro. That's kind of cheesy, but it's what we say. 
I think that's it, man. Thank you guys so much for watching this. I sincerely hope that this helps you catch more and bigger fish. I know if you guys can figure this pattern out, it will. I know. Like, this isn't like a hope. You know? Like, I know this pattern will help you catch more and bigger fish. It is a big part of how I've made my living over the last eight years since I first started guiding. Um, it's been a great pattern for me over the years. So, dig in on it. It'll pay off. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time right here your Lake Fort guy.